Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we're talking about the cues that you use uh, to get a horse, specifically a gated horse, to gate. So what are the cues? And here's the, the trick is I'm going to be telling you the answer, but you may not like it. And if most of you have been following my videos, you'll know. So right, you know, the cue is it's right here. It's right there. I'm going to show you um, what the cue is, the magic cue, and we're not, as the case could be. Um, so I get this question almost more than any other question, is I'm new to gated horses. I'm not sure if I'm doing this wrong. How do I cue my gated horse to gate? That's the question I get. Or I'm not sure the horse used to gate, the horse isn't gating now. How do I need to sit? use my legs, hold my reins, what kind of saddle do I need, what bit is going to make my horse gait. And it all boils down to these people are looking for a very specific cue. And the problem is, here, here's the answer, the unfortunate answer that I have to tell so many people and why I'm doing a specific video on it because, well, partly because I'm kind of tired of answering the question over and over, um, is that there is no one cue to get your horse to gait. Even between breeds, between Tennessee walking horses and fox trotters and Rocky Mountains, there is no one cue that is used <clears throat> even by other people to get your horse to gait. It's not like if you turn your legs this way, squeeze and make this noise and hold the reins this way that they'll go into gait. That has never been true. Even in this show ring, um, I mean, the most common thing that could be considered a cue would be they'll tell you to pull the reins in and kick them to go. But that, as we are learning, is very old-fashioned, and in this case, it doesn't even work. So, uh, just saying, right, it's, it's not, there is no specific cue, and I'm going to repeat that throughout the video. There's no one cue to gate. But that doesn't mean that we can't train our horses to gate and get them to gate, even if you're a beginner or new to gated horses. That's the thing. So, Feel free to jump in here with any questions you guys have. I'm happy to answer them. We're going to talk about it. The trick, there is one thing you can do to get your horse to gate consistently. And I've had so many testimonials from people that have started using this and have had huge amounts of success. And that is to use the method of stop and praise. It doesn't require any tools. It doesn't require any special abilities. If you work with your horse at all, doing anything, whether it's groundwork or riding, you can use this to increase your horse's ability to do what you want. So that's called what I call stop and praise. And stop and praise isn't just stop and pet the horse and tell them they did a good job. Did a good job. Stop and praise is about stopping, letting the horse rest and think about it and absorb everything you're teaching. One of the things that I've really has been hammered home in the last few days reading some posts about clicker training and positive reinforcement is what's called the rate of reinforcement. How often you have to, in the case of positive reinforcement or clicker training, give food, how often you have to do that to get a horse to understand and not be frustrated. And one of the goals was to feed your horse a treat every 15 seconds, or no, 15 times in one minute. So give 15 treats in uh 15 reward 15 times in one minute which is about every four seconds and that's not exactly possible for a lot of things absolutely it's possible for some training things but not for everything but it showed me it made me think about how often i have to stop and praise to help the horse understand something so i'm just going to read you this quote uh that i have i'm going to do a whole session talking about rate of reinforcement but uh, Lori Frederica Higgins posted this recently, and I love it. She, this quote is by her. She said, you can't train a don't. You can only train a do. Figure out what you want your horse to do and train that. So we say that again. You can't train a don't. You can only train a do. Figure out what you, what you want them to do, your horse, and do what you want them to do and train that. The positive, not the negative. So when I'm thinking about using stop and praise, I'm really wanting to use it to let the horse know what I want them to do. I have taken horses that have not been gating and just using stop and praise along with head down 
whenever they give me a couple steps of gait, you stop and praise and you can see a difference in an hour. Sometimes it's days, week, but often in an hour. If I have a horse that'll gait a little bit, if I stop and praise for those couple steps within an hour, that horse is starting to gait. It's almost unreal, but the idea is that we give the horse a reason to keep doing the thing we want. I had a question asking me about a horse that how to get the horse to walk faster. And the answer is when the horse walks a little bit faster, stop and praise. Praise the horse for the do. Don't think about punishing or correcting or stopping that bad behavior or the don't. Praise for when they do the correct thing, no matter what it is, whether it's side passing, stopping and backing up, walking with you on the lead rope, um, moving forward with you, cantering on the correct lead, lead changes, picking their feet up. Reward the do. Don't punish or correct the don't. So we have Hi Susan and Hi Nancy. Cheryl says she's just four hours away because she's in Magnolia, Texas. So hi. Monica says hi. Pamela says, hi, Ivy, I love these videos. I think it's possible to get my Tennessee walking horse to switch back and forth between the gate when I want and running him for pole bending or barrels. In other words, does it confuse the horse too much? That's a great question. Uh, it doesn't really confuse the horse, I don't think, especially if you train the canter or the gallop specifically. When you do that, you train the gate with a verbal cue and train something else when you want to run the barrels or poles, and it shouldn't confuse them, because we train horses to gated horses to trot and gait and canter and walk, and this would just be a separate thing, and you try to give it a separate cue or way to ask for them to do this so that they understand you're not asking for the gate, you're asking for something different. Hi, Kelly from Lexington, Kentucky. Thanks for joining us. So, it's so simple, it's almost scary. But what you do to get the horse to gate more or to start gating or the cue is stop and praise. Now let's go back and, and talk about cues for just a sec. So when I'm riding uh, and I want my horse to gate, I have very simple cues. I sit still, usually lean back more than I would if I was going to ask for the trot. I give a little squeeze of my legs and I go, That's all. That, that's my that's my cue. And, I, and if they don't go forward, I squeeze a little with my legs, like bump, bump. That's it. That's my cue. I sit there. My reins are down. Often, if you watch my videos, my reins are completely loose. And that is my cue to get the horse to gate. Now, you can make any noise you want as long as it's consistent. You can say gate on. You can say walk on. You can use a different noise. But as long as you're consistent that then becomes your cue. But the horse is not born knowing how to gate with whatever cue you use. So like when I get on my horse Serenity, she's a gated horse, she wasn't born knowing that when I squeeze her and go that she should gate. Now most people subconsciously think that horses are born knowing how to gate with a cue. Think about that. Or that trainers use a cue to get them to gate. They don't. They may have a, you know, pull back and push forward, which is common. A lot of people will tell you, but the horses don't just gate when they tell you that. They often gate when there's a rider that understands how to get them to move that way. So what I propose and what I'm trying to teach people is that we train horses to stay in whatever gate we want. Do you want them to trot? They can trot. Do you want them to pace? They can pace. Do you want them to do a nice, smooth, four-beat gait? They can do that too. But how do they know which one we want them to do? And the stop and praise is the key to unlocking so much in your training. And it's the key to unlocking the horse doing the gait that you want. Uh, Susan says, Illinois lost is Texas gain. Yep, I am happy to be here. It was like 78 today outside. Oh, so nice. Um, Nancy says, stop and praise works well for everything. It's like magic. And that's what people are finding out. If you're willing to just trust me, try the stop and praise for everything you teach, you're going to find it works. Now, I'll often use treats during my training, but if not, I'll just use stop and praise. And when I say stop and praise, again, I do mean stop for something like 60 seconds, two minutes, not just five or 10 seconds, which is what most people try. Make yourself count to 60. Sing a song. Oh, look at your phone. Actually, today I was working uh, on mare, my mare Luna 
in the arena. And while I had stopped her, we were sitting there and I was letting her chew on some grain. Uh, I got a phone call. So I'm sitting on the horse. I take the phone call and I, while I'm on the phone, I talk for maybe five, eight minutes, something like that. She stood really well. And periodically throughout while she was standing there, I'd give her a treat, but stopping and letting them just chill there, let them process and helps them learn so much faster. Patrice says it works. Stop and praise works. And that's what everybody's fine. I've never had anybody yet could happen. Contact me and say that stop and praise doesn't work. Never. Right. I, I sell bits and then the bit doesn't always work for every horse. That's normal. It's just stuff. Stop and praise is a way to let the horse know when they've done something correct. It's communication. It's letting the horse realize that he's doing all these things. But we want something very specific and we can reward him for that specific thing. Melissa says, hi from Louisville, Kentucky. <clears throat> I have a hard time getting more speed at the gate as she breaks into the canter or even does half gate, half canter. Um, that's a good question. So how do you get the horse to go a little bit faster when they want to break into the canter? Well, first thing, never, never, never canter from the gate. Always from the walk. Very first rule that I would tell you. Second, Here's the thing. When people tell me they have a hard time getting more speed, what they usually mean is they have a hard time getting more speed and getting the horse to hold it for a mile. Well, that's a big difference than having a hard time getting any speed. Most people just ask for too much. Now, Melissa, I know you work with your horse and so I know you're not probably asking for too much, but remember, go out, ride by yourself, ask for a little bit more speed. If she gives it to you, stop and praise or slow down to a walk. But don't ask for 100 or 200 feet. Ask for 10 or 20 feet of speed. If she starts to canter, check her with the reins. Don't let her canter at all. Not even that half canter. And only, only, only ask from the canter from the walk, right? Very important. Rebecca says hi from Paw Paw, Michigan. Hey, it's been a while since I've been in Michigan. Hopefully I'll be able to do a clinic there sometime soon. So the stop and praise then allows the horse to understand whatever we're asking. So if we're asking for a faster gait, there is no cue, no way you sit or ride that gets a horse to gait faster. You ask for a faster gait. When they give you it for a step or two, you let the horse know they did the right thing, which is to slow down to walk, stop and praise. This is how the horse understands that they did the right thing. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense there. Um, and, and then whatever you asked, if you gave squeeze your legs and clucked, that then becomes the cue for the horse to gate. That's it. It's no big deal. They learn whatever cue you ask them to. I teach my horses to step over to me on the mounting block and teach a specific cue, but somebody else could come along and teach a different cue. Melissa says if she paces or breaks into the canter, how long to wait after coming down from the walk before asking again for the gate? Okay, so let's go, let's go back to the asking for the canter, so, or asking for the faster gate. So as an example, your horse is gating along, okay? You ask for the faster speed, and instead of giving you a couple steps faster, which if she does, stop and praise, but if, if she breaks to the canter, slow her back down to the gate, that she's, the speed she's comfortable. If she's gating, release the pressure on the reins, then gently ask her to speed up. If she speeds up even a step or two, slow down and walk. It, and then, or stop and praise, right? Give her a reward for hitting that nice gate. If she breaks into the canter, I don't slow down to a walk because that's kind of a reward. I slow back down to the gate. Same thing with the pace. If she paces, ask for the head down. You know that. If you have to slow down to the walk, no problem, but immediately speed her back up again. The walk should <clears throat> happen when she does this faster gait and then let her walk for 30 or 60 seconds before asking again. The trick is most horses will gait faster, smoothly, for a couple steps and most people totally ignore that. They totally ignore the effort their horse did and instead of being happy with a couple steps, they want a quarter mile or a mile or two miles to keep up with their friends but they never got the horse conditioned and in shape for doing that. Same thing if you wanted to show your horse in the show ring, you need to condition the horse to be able to gate that long in a circle. And if you want to do endurance rides, you have to get your horse in condition. So when your horse, most horses will gate a little faster, but they won't hold it. And that's where people expect the horse to be able to gate slowly and then gate faster for just as long without getting them in shape and conditioning them. Denise says, I have taught my horse a marker word that I can use in the ground or under saddle using the word like yes. Which also provides feedback to the horse. 
It provides feedback if the horse knows what yes means, but I totally agree. I have used the dogs and easily transferred this to horses. Stop and praise is the way to tell the horse, yes, that's what I want. Also schools the horse on patiently standing still when asked. Absolutely, Denise. Especially if yes is followed by a, what's called a reinforcer. Now, in clicker training, usually the reinforcer is food, though not always. It can be scratches, but it can also be stop and rest or stop and eat or um, anything that the horse likes that it wants more of, which becomes then a reinforcer. And that's a really good way to, to talk about it. So that's good. And you can use yes. I use a, an actual clicker, which goes, or I actually use a tongue click, which is, which is very different from my, or at least it's different to the horses. I've never had my horses trained to the cluck stop when I go. They can hear the difference and know that the cluck, my tongue click, means they did the right thing. So it's just like your yes. And it means if they stop, they're going to get a treat or eat some grass, which is what I do when I'm using the cluck. You can use yes and have it be followed up with rest. That works really well. It's called a bridge signal. And that's a great way to do it. Melissa says, makes sense. Thanks. So anything you want your horse to do, whether it's coming to you on the mounting block, stepping over for the side pass, if your horse is trained to do it already, it does behoove you to learn how they were trained. But if your horse has never done it consistently for you or anyone else, then it's not a specific cue you're looking for, but an actual way to train the gate or train the side pass or train the step over. And then you can give it whatever cue you want. So I'm hoping this video will clear up for a lot of people that ask me, what is the cue to get a horse to gait? And unfortunately, the answer is there isn't one, which is sad. There is no one thing, no one way to ride that is going to make your horse go into gait. It's something you have to train and teach the horse what you want them to do and then be consistent with that. But we can take that knowledge and train our horses to do literally anything. Today I'm riding my horse bridleless. She didn't which she wasn't born with the cues on how to do that, but I can train her to do those things and reward her. And you can do the same thing with your horses. It's a matter of when they do gate a few steps, stop and praise. That is going to help you more than anything I say, anything else I can give you. The things I teach are head down and stop and praise and using those tools, which doesn't cost anything to use. You don't have to be an amazing rider to get it. You just have to spend the time to do it. Stop and praise will get you as far as you want to go. You can use it on any horse, any breed, during anything you're training, and it will help you and the horse make progress. It's just, you just have to use it. So let me know if you guys have any other questions. I actually have a couple more magnets to show people that I was sent. So I just moved to Texas, and I was living with my parents before, so I showed up here and I don't have a, I didn't have a single magnet for my refrigerator. So I've been asking people if they want to send me just a magnet from their state or their area. It's awesome. So I can just have some magnets in my fridge and see where, where they're from and see the cool places people live. So I do have a few of them. I forgot to grab them. I'm going to go grab them and be right back and show you guys uh, the magnets that I've met, that I got in the mail. Okay, I'm back. Okie dokie. So, I have... So again, I asked for magnets from folks so that I could have some magnets in my fridge and get some cool sort of things. So, this one is from Nan and Jack in Maryland. Or oh, I think they're in Maryland. That's right, yeah, in Maryland. And I worked with them a few years ago in Pennsylvania, which is awesome. So here's the magnet she got me. Maryland, I assume it's like the state flag and it's a little crab. Maryland, which is awesome. So thank you, Nan and Jack. And I do hope I get to work with you guys again soon. You guys are awesome. So that one. Okay. And this one just came. Came. It's a really cool one. So this one, it was a little bit difficult to read. So this is from Terry Tith, and hers is from California. And it's a little metal 
one, there you go. If you guys can read it, hopefully it's not flipped. It says California. Um, if it is flipped, just trust me, it says California. So anyway, that's pretty cool there. Thank you so much for that one. And she sent this, this pretty, uh, card with it as well. So that's pretty cool. And okay, there we go. There you go. Now it's in focus. Okay, there you go. There's that. Um, so yeah, I think my collection is up to five, uh, after this next one I'm going to show you. Okay. And this other one, it's a little bit of a mystery. Um, so this is from, this magnet is an Oklahoma one from Becca. So the trick is, I'm not sure who <laughs> is, uh, who Becca is in California, but thank you very, very much for that. I really like that one. So you guys could see the Oklahoma one there. So anyway, thank you very much, Becca. Thank you so much, guys. Um, and I'll put the address in a link in the description uh, if anybody else wants to send a magnet. Um, Betty says, I'm trying to get Jem to lower his head at the walk and when trying to gate. When he finally gave me several steps of fairly smooth gate, I stopped and praised and got off. It is taking a long time with him. Well, it sounds like you're on the right track, and I know you're going to keep working at it, and you're going to get it um, with your horse. Head down, for some horses, is very difficult, and some with some horses, if head down is really hard for them, I have to work and insist, and I do lots of stop and praise, but I, I they have to put their head down. I do not give them an option. Um, tomorrow's video, wait, tomorrow's video? I think it's tomorrow's video. I'm going to be doing a video or tomorrow or the next day, it's a video on what I do first when I'm working with gated horses. I think that's tomorrow. And I'm going to be talking about head down and how important it is to insist to the horse that you have to drop the head. It's like, it's not an option. Now it's an option. But basically when I start riding any gated horse, I work on head down first. And within, and again, in most clinics, most horses when the first day or two are dropping their head really well, but most people are shocked and amazed with some horses that are high-headed, how quick it happens. But I also don't let them put their head up. As soon as that head comes up, I am right there with the pressure, asking them to soften their nose. And then I release, and then they drop their head. And it's super important to get after them. So um, one thing too, Betty, if you want, feel free just to take a video of you working on head down and send it to me. And I'll take a look and see if I can give you some feedback to help you with the head down. Um, and with the with a pacey horse, it can take a little while. So let me know if you would like a little bit of help. Send me that video and I will do that. Uh, Sue says, how many magnets would it take to convince you to come to Utah to work with me and Ruby? Well, I, well, it'll, it'll take quite a lot of magnets, but I would love to come to Utah. Um, so basically let me know if you think you can set up a clinic or have a location we can set one up. And I know there's definitely some gated horses in Utah and in the area. We probably could fill it up. I love Utah, so it won't take too much. We just need a place to do it. Um, message me and I'll send you some information on how to set up a clinic and then we can get that going. Mm, okay. Anyway, thanks everybody for joining. Remember tomorrow talking about what I work with first to, with gated horses. What's the first thing I start doing? Again, most of you know head down, but I'm going to try to show you some footage of a horse that was very high headed at the beginning probably wouldn't think I would be able to get a head down and get a slower horse, but I'm going to show you some footage and hopefully that will help you guys learn a little bit and just see most people would be like, oh, this horse won't put their head down. But within a few minutes, that horse is putting the head down, which is really cool. And it just proves my point, but I also wanted to inspire people that they can do the same thing. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Merry Christmas. Have a great ride.